This is Bobby O'Rourke, answered the $16,000 question. She's back to tell us whether she'll take her 16 or leave it and try for 32,000 on her march to the $64,000 question. And last week, jet pilot on Sherlock Holmes, Captain Thomas O'Rourke, answered the $16,000 question. Tonight, he's back to tell us whether he'll take his 16 or leave it and try for $32,000 on his march to the $64,000 question. The greatest name in cosmetics presents the 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Yes, the $64,000 question. If it's the finest of its kind in cosmetics, it's by Revlon. And later on in our show, we promise you an exciting new Revlon shade preview of the look that rocks the Riviera. And now, the star of our show, where knowledge is king and the reward king size, Hal Mart. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's a very exciting evening here that we anticipate. It's our first anniversary on the air. Glad that you could join us. Let's get the show started. Bill, who is Revlon's first guest? Well, Hal, our first guest is our first $64,000 winner, Captain Richard McCutcheon. Good evening, Hal. Welcome to the show, Dick. Thank you, Hal. Before we begin, I think it's only fair to tell you that regardless of what happens, you go away here without a quarter tonight, okay? Okay. You win nothing tonight. All righty. Dick, uh, <laughs> it, it's, you put on a little weight, haven't you? Yes, I have, Hal. You have also, I think. <laughs> well, I'd like to believe that's not true, but if it is, I got married. What's your excuse? I've stayed off of quiz shows. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, do you want to explain why you happen to be here? Yes, Hal. I came up here to help you celebrate the program's first anniversary. Well, that's wonderful. I think it's very, very nice of you to do that. Did you whip up a cake for the occasion? No, I don't bake so well, but someone else did, and it's right over here. Come on out with this thing. Thank you. Joyce Brothers, Billy Pearson. There's two hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars represented here. There was. Well, four. Yeah. Dick says there was. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to have you here. Oh, who's gonna uh, Who's gonna blow out the candle in there? Gloria. Gloria Lockerman is here. Gloria, come on out and blow out the candle. That's for later. I mean, you can't. We're not going to have that now. Okay. Can you make that? Good. I know what you wish, but you can't come back on this show, Gloria. <laughs> Who's going to uh, cut the first slice? Dick? I will, Hal, if you'll allow me to. Oh. Careful. Oh, boy. Put an H on that. I'll have that after the show. Don't take it out hey, now, Dick. Okay? That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Well, now, if, if we'll all see each other after the show, incidentally, after the show, the body of the show, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to meet again uh, a great number of the people who were big winners in our show, so by all means, stick around. It's going to be wonderful seeing them all again. And Dick, Gloria, Billy, Joyce, and Mike will see you all after the show, too, okay? Thanks very right, much thanks. for bringing this cake out, Gloria. <laughs> Uh, uh, Bill, who is Revlon's next guest for real? <laughs> well, Hal, back to the fourth week on her climb to the $64,000 question is our Air Force wife from Fairborn, Ohio, whose category is Sherlock Holmes. This is Bobby O'Rourke. It must be true what they say, Bobby, because you look just beautiful. You're getting prettier every week. You know what my father would say? What? You've been kissing the Blarney Stone. Tastes good. Tastes good. Bobby, how did you and your husband, Tom, develop such a tremendous interest in Sherlock Holmes, such a great knowledge of it? Well, um, I really don't know. I started reading Sherlock when I was about 10, and I think Tom started when he was about 12, and since we've been married, well, anything he wants to do, well, I want to do, too. 
Well, is that, is that how you uh, grew so close together, your common interest in crime? Nothing quite that sinister, I hope. <laughs> no, uh, I think the thing that first interested me in Tom was the fact that he didn't pay the slightest bit of attention to me. Were you still wearing braces on your teeth or something? I... No, the typical Air Force tactics. Just act indifferent and never commit yourself. And the enemy will walk all over you. Doesn't work. It might have worked in your case. Anyway, we're going to find out what your decision is in just a moment, Bobby. But right now, I'd like to say this to you ladies. Don't say that I didn't warn you. So go, Rick, get ready, get set, because here comes Evelyn Patrick to take you out of this world and into a sensational new world of color. Evelyn? Won't you come with me through this flowering orchard of beauty to welcome the exciting birth of a fabulous new color, a fantastic color like nothing ever known before. It's the lighter, brighter look in a lipstick and nail enamel that's pure allure for you. Revlon Snow Peach. Snow Peach, Snow Peach, Snow Peach, Snow Peach. The color, the girl. Both spirited right out of the Revlon ad in the current Vogue. Here's the look that rocked the Riviera. Snow Peach. A peach with a pink complexion cooling its blushes in the snow. As featured on the cover of Vogue, here's Snow Peach come to life. Look how Snow Peach goes to her head with Mr. John's velvet bow topping. How Seal Chapman frames our Snow Peach princess in Snow White file. And to add new summer brilliance, Vogue's choice for matching lips and fingertips. Snow Peach, a warm, delicious color flirting with cool, cool frost. Snow Peach, Snow Peach, Snow Peach. Here is seen again and again in the pages of Vogue, sun-ripened, snow-dazzled Snow Peach lends its peach blush flattery to any frock you choose. Delicious with everything you wear, everywhere you go. Snow Peach, a soft, rosy peach with no more yellow in it than the sun provides. Terrific with your summer tan, makes your pale complexion look like peaches and cream. Snow Peach, Snow Peach, Snow Peach. Snow Peach, a peach with a pink complexion cooling its blushes in the snow, puts its brilliant glint on you wherever you go. Yes, whether you tan to a golden brown or stay really fair, Revlon puts beauty within your reach with never before Snow Peach. Snow Peach. Snow Peach. It's hot, it's cold, it's beautiful, it's bold. This powerhouse peach will make your summer. Girls, if I might suggest, you better reach for a snow peach lipstick and matching nail enamel tomorrow. It's Revlon's greatest shade. Thank you. <laughs> I'm kind of sorry that production, that, was, that wasn't a commercial. That was a Zeke Field musical <laughs> comedy. It was beautiful, wasn't it? It should have been in color. Yeah, it really was beautiful. Well, Bobby, I don't know why we're wasting time here when there's $32,000 involved. Let's state the facts. You now have $16,000, and you're going to tell us tonight whether you're going to take it or leave it and try it for $32,000. Have you arrived at a decision? Well, Hal, my decision is the same as it was last week. Tom and I decided that whoever came out first would try. Uh -huh. And then if I lose, well, we'll stop. And if I don't lose, well, we won't stop. What you're saying is that right now I you're going to go ahead for $32,000. Bobby, if you're ready, so are we. Lynn, would you escort Bobby into the booth for the question, please? Okay, Bobby? Fine. Comfortable? A little warm. Well, let's hope that you're not in there too long. You ready for the question? Yes. May I have it, please? Thanks, Ben. Bobby, as you remember, I'll read the question once. I won't repeat it. You'll then have 30 seconds to determine your answer, okay? Here we are in the category of Sherlock Holmes. Concealment of identity under an alias is a feature of many of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. For example, Hugh Boone, the beggar,
proved to be the respectable Mr. Neville St. Clair in the case of the man with the twisted lip. For $32,000, I will give you seven names. You give me the title of the story and give another name by which this character was ever known. Here are the names. First, Waldron. Next, Signora Victor Durando. Third, Henry Peters. Then, Jack McMurdo. Next, James Winter. Sixth, Vandeleur, the schoolmaster. And finally, James Armitage. You have 30 seconds to think over your answer. Good luck, Bobby. thing to see. You're a little confident. Okay, here we go. The first name and the title and another name by which this character was ever known. First, Waldron. Um, Waldron was Roger Prescott in The Adventure of the Three Garadets. That's correct. The second, Signora Victor Durando. Signora Victor Durando was alias Miss Burnett in The Adventure of the Wisteria Lodge. That's correct. Third, Henry Peters. Henry Peters was also known as Holy Peters and Dr. Schlesinger in The Disappearance of Lady Frances Carfax. That's correct. Fourth, Jack McMurdo. Jack McMurdo was known as John Douglas, and he was also known as Bertie Edwards in The Valley of Fear. That's correct. Next, James Winter. Um, James Winter is alias Killer Evans, alias John Garadab, alias Moorcroft, in The Adventure of the Three Garadabs. That's correct. Sixth, Vandeleur the Schoolmaster. Vandeleur was uh, John Stapleton, and he was also known as Roger Baskerville in The Hound of the Baskervilles. That's correct. One more, and finally now for $32,000. The name is James Armitage. James Armitage was uh, J.P. Trevor in The Glory of Scott. That's correct for $32,000. Oh, that's wonderful. You, you kind of felt a little confident there when I finished reading the seventh name, huh? Well, I, I was pretty sure that I knew them, but then I thought, well, oh, I can't go blank now. <laughs> We'd have waited until Thursday if you did. I'd have just stood there and waited. Well, I guess I know now what Captain is going to do, huh? Anyway, well, Bobby, you've just won 32000 Your next question, as you know, is worth 64000 We want you to go home for a week. I Take need it. <laughs> Take over to your station, come back next week and tell us whether you're going to take the 32. If you decide to go for 64 next week, if you can find one that knows a little bit more than you, you're entitled to have in the booth with you another expert in the field of Sherlock Holmes, okay? Thank you, Congratulations, Hal. and tonight, Bobby, we'll oh. see you next week. <laughs> Bill, as if I don't know, who is Revlon's next guest? Well, Hal, back for the third week on its time with the $64,000 question is our jet pilot from Fairborn, Ohio, whose category is Sherlock Holmes, Captain Thomas O'Rourke. What do you think about your wife just winning $32,000? I'm a hog about that woman. <laughs> <laughs> what part of the country? Terrific. Is that, a, is that a colloquialism of some part of the country? Well, if it is, I'm going to blame it on Texas. Well, that's good enough. Okay. Talking about, uh, I'd like to get back to what Bobby was talking about before. Tell me more about this Air Force approach to girls. Uh, Hal, that's not an Air Force approach to girls. That's just a, a simple technique handed down from, from man bachelor to, man. to bachelor. Bachelor right? to bachelor. No sweat. And this is the, what is what exactly is this basic concept of? Well, we never. Uh, it's the same deal that you probably use. We never commit ourselves until we're sure. Right. I imagine that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> Well, how soon after you met Bobby did you commit yourself? Well, I uh, was very sure the next day, so I committed myself. <laughs> then. 
That's giving it enough time. Well, how did you manage to sweep a girl off her feet in 24 hours? Well, it, uh, it wasn't very easy, Hal. I had to shoot about, uh, oh, I guess I had to shoot down about 23 Texans to get to her. But uh, after that, it was no problem. Sheriff, here's your man. 23 Texans you had in Argyle. Well, that's what... Tom, we're going to get to your decision in just a moment. But right now, here's a question I have for you ladies. What will they think of next? Here's Evelyn Patrick to tell you about a combination they did think of next. Snow Peach and Futurama. Yes, girls, for color that puts a new light on your lips that is pure allure, you'll want Revlon shade of Snow Peach lipstick. And, of course, you'll want it in a glamorous Futurama like this. The engraved white enamel case is just perfect for any fashion and bound to give you that feeling of elegance every woman wants. With Futurama within easy reach, you're at your best. But the marvelous part about this stunning Futurama is it looks expensive, but it's not. And remember, with Futurama, you're getting a permanent case because all you need ever buy again is a Revlon refill that clicks in and out as easily as this. That means a saving of 35 cents on every single lipstick you buy. So girls, when you say the light, bright shade that's bound to give you a look of summer brilliance, say Snow Peach in a Futurama. That's right, girls. Give yourself a gift of a Snow Peach in a Futurama tomorrow. And folks, remember, Futurama is the perfect gift for graduations, bridesmaids, birthdays, and anniversary, really nearly anything. Thank you. Try <laughs> As I indicated before, I have a feeling about what you're going to do, what with $32,000 in the family coffers up till now, but I think I'd better ask you, just for the sake of the record, have you arrived at a decision as to whether you're going to keep the $16,000 you now have or leave it and try for $32,000? I'm going to go for $32,000. That's Hal. short and sweet, $32,000. <laughs> Tom, if you're ready to get into I'm the... Uh, as Captain McCutcheon once phrased it, the pressure cooker, so are we. Lynn, would you escort the captain in, please? Okay, huh? Yes, sir, I am, and Captain McCutcheon was right. <laughs> okay, may I have a question, please? I'll ask the question once as you remember, Tom, and I won't repeat it. You'll then have 30 seconds to think it over. Is this... Oh, well, $32,000. Concealment of identity under an alias is a feature of many of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. For example, Black Jack of Ballarat was the assumed name of John Turner in the Boscombe Valley mystery. For $32,000, I will give you seven names. You give me the title of the story and give another name by which this character was ever known. Okay? Here are the names. First, Arthur Harry Pinner. Next, Sutton. Third, Mrs. Norlett. Then... Don Juan Murillo, next, Hosmer Angel, sixth, Sergius, the Nihilist, I guess that's the correct pronunciation, Nihilist, thank you. <laughs> if you can ever tell me anything, feel free. <laughs> the seventh part of this question, finally, is Mr. Cornelius. You have 30 seconds to determine your answer. Good luck, Tom. Tom, I want the title of the story and another name by which this character was ever known. First, Arthur Harry Pinner. That is uh, Beddington. You want the story now? Yes. Uh, Beddington and the stockbroker's clerk. That's correct. Next, Sutton. Sutton is Blessington in the Adventure of the Resident Patient. That's correct. Third, Mrs. Norlett. Uh, Mrs. Norlett is Carrie Evans in uh, Adventure of Shuscombe Old Place. That's correct. Fourth, Don Juan Murillo. 
Don Juan Murillo is uh, the Tiger of San Pedro, alias uh, uh, Henderson, and later on in the story, that they call him the Marquis of Montalva. And the story? Uh, the story is uh, the Adventure of Wisteria Lodge. That's correct. Fifth, Hosmer Angel. Hosmer Angel is James uh, Windybank in the case of identity. That's correct. Sixth, Sergius the Nihilist. <laughs> this is warm. Uh, Sergius is Professor Corum in the Golden Pants May. That's correct. One more now for $32,000, Tom. The name is Mr. Cornelius. Mr. Cornelius is uh, Jonas, Old, Jonas Oldacre in The Adventure of the Norwood Builder. You're right for $32,000. Funny thing. <laughs> you had the hardest question. That's, a, that's <laughs> the richest family on the block, you know, right? A funny thing happened is after I asked the question and stepped aside for Tom to think, I looked over at Bobby who was standing over there and I went like this. And she did this. <laughs> you better have so, <laughs> It's a pretty wonderful feeling oh, oh. so far, okay? Yeah, if right. you have nothing better to do, can you be back next week and tell us if you'll take the 32000 or leave it and try for sixty-four? We will have nothing better to do. Okay, <laughs> thank, uh, you. thank you. Congratulations. Thank we'll you see you so next much. week. <laughs> Bill, who is Revlon's next guest? Well, Hal, our next guest on the golden threshold of the $64,000 question is from Thule, Greenland, Peter Kroiken. Good evening, Peter. Good Welcome evening. back Good to evening. the show. Good evening. You're looking very chipper tonight. Yes, yeah, a little warm. It is a little warm yeah. here, isn't it? Peter, do you mind if I make a personal observation about you? Oh, no. Go ahead. Well, with your beard and the salty air about you, did anyone ever tell you you resembled Captain Ahab and Moby Dick? No, no, sir. But by the way, I heard they made a movie of it, and uh, Greg Ward Peggy's playing it. Very yeah. flattering. I'm very comfortable. Well, I meant Thank it you. that way. Thank I you. Thank it. you. That's all right. That's fine. Under the beard, I imagine you do look a little like Gregory Peck. You're both tall. Well, have you have you ever gone whale hunting, Peter? But that's my trait. You sure I have, yes. Yeah. But uh, not uh, like uh, the Captain Ahab did. I'm just uh, whaling up in Greenland. And we don't go go for sperm whales there. We just go for right whales, blue whales, snail whales, and white whales, and the kind that's up there, you see. Well, how do you go about hunting a whale? Well, you see, the modern ways of whaling huh? is to have a gun in the bow on the boat. But I'm going the old way, you know, using the hand harpoon. Well, I was just about to ask you how you do it. You, you do yeah, it all. Yes, yeah, so, so with your hand, you have the line on this side, you know, and yeah. throw it out there and, and uh, hit the whale. What does the whale do? He goes down to the button and stay there for an hour or two, if he can, and he's scared, you know. I imagine he is a little scared, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, does he ever come up? Sure, he has to go up and get his air, get air again, and then he gets the second harpoon. Like and you hit him again when he comes up. Yes, huh? he's pretty sick, you know, when he's been down there for a long time. <laughs> and then he gets the third harpoon and we keep on until we get him. You can keep him. You're entitled to it, after all. <laughs> How many whales do you think you harpooned in your life? Well, 20, 30. I, I don't count them, you know. We just yeah. cut them up and get the blubber. Well, that's a lot of blubber, 30 whales. Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, Peter, let's yeah. get on with the game because okay. I'm sure you're yeah. interested in winning a little money here. Last I week, you, we ran out of time just after you uh, answered the $5, $512 question. Now it's time to step over to the area of Mr. Fight and answer the $1,000 question, yes, okay? I'm... Would you follow me, Peter, please? You, yes. In the category of seven Cs, which covers many yeah. things, your question for $1,000. You ready for oh, it? Yes. Here we go. This question is on maritime geography, Peter. For $1,000, what islands owned by the United States are the preserve and breeding ground for the largest herds of fur seals? Well, that's the Pueblo Islands up at uh, close to Alaska. You're right. Just a flat. You're going to 
have told me they were in Wyoming, it wouldn't have made any difference. Your next question's worth two thousand dollars. If you sure. like going for it, sure, sure. All right, Peter, here it is. Two thousand dollar question deals with oceanography and wind flow. Okay. For two thousand dollars, tell me first, in what direction does the upper current flow through the Strait of Gibraltar? Second, in what direction does the monsoon blow from April to October? First, in what direction does the upper current flow through the Strait of Gibraltar? The upper cur current from blow flow to the east from, uh, from at, at Atlantic Sea in the middle. That's correct. Middle Second, in what direction does the monsoon blow from April to October? From April to October, it blows from southwest to northeast. That's correct for $2,000. <laughs> With each question, Peter's getting a little wider smile. Your next question's worth $4,000. Fine, go on. All right, $4,000. I'm sorry, it takes a little time to get them out of the envelope. All right, for $4,000, your question is on exploring. For $4,000, tell me these three things. First, what Portuguese navigator discovered the sea route to India and later died while viceroy of India at Cochin? Next. Well, let's take that if you want to answer that. Well, uh, that was uh, Fernando, uh, not uh, das Gama, Vasco da Gama. That's correct. That's name. Died 1521. Uh, That's not necessary. Uh, I didn't even know he was sick, to be honest. With you. <laughs> the next part of this question, what American sea captain first sighted Antarctica? Oh, that was uh, Captain Palmer from Stonington. That's correct. Third, for $4,000, what is the full name and nationality of the man for whom the Barents Sea is named? That's B-A-R-E-N-T-S-C. <coughs> that was the Dutch Captain uh, Willem Barents. That's right, for $4,000. <laughs> The next okay, well, that's then. all right. It's fine. You Thank just you. Pick, picked up four thousand dollars. You're having a lot of fun, Peter. Sure. Thanks for being with us. We'll see Thank you next you. week. Okay. Thank Good night, Peter. Night. You know, ladies, no matter how often you use a greasy cream or scrub your face with soap, if you'll forgive my saying this, you still leave some dirt behind. So, I'd suggest getting your skin thoroughly clean with clean and clear. Clean and clear, clean and clear. Any soap, any cream, any lotion cleanser can get your skin clean on the surface. But clean and clear is the only cationic cleanser. Cationic, that means it can reach deep down to attract makeup and grime from five cell layers of your skin. Ordinary cleansers reach only the top cell layer. But clean and clear reaches five. Lifts out makeup and grime that other cleansers leave behind. Remember, dirt-free skin is healthy skin. And your skin looks its beautiful best when it's clean and clear. Good idea is to try clean and clear yourself tomorrow. You'll say, my face never felt so clean. My skin never looked so clear. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we close tonight, I'd like you now to once again look at some pretty wonderful people who have accumulated quite a fortune over the past year. I won't bother, there are too many of them to say hello to individually, so what do you say I walk by them and a general congratulations and we'll share the year. Here they are, here are some of the people. That's me. is arranged by American Airlines who will fly contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. 